Hello and welcome back to building a space elevator again, episode 24. Let's get started. All right, so today's focus was building out the solar panels to get more power, seemingly to say, <laughs> is this enough solar panels? So I initially started out building the solar panel like one grid at a time. So here's grid number one, and then I projected it forward, left and right over here. And we're just going to build it out to see if this is more than enough solar panels to gain energy. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's getting a lot of sun at this point. So I definitely need to move this thing a little bit by angling it. I wanted to do a fixed solar panel. Pretty much big enough to suck up the sun off the ground so when the sun pretty much reaches the afternoon or so right up this way it should get all these panels lit up green to the max of course i still need to weld up a few more things here i didn't get a chance to do that because this took close to an hour just to do because my um assemblers were having issues with building solar panels because I keep getting that issue of clogging up with the iron and everything like that. So same thing is still, it's still happening as you see there, but I need to fix that problem relatively soon. Cause it's going to get really, really annoying in the long run. And it looks like I may need to do some gravel management as well. Although we don't necessarily need gravel. I keep it mainly to build out maybe reactors and stuff like that, but yeah anyways we're gonna take our time to get this done but i think i'm have to release this off the ground a little bit and what i'm planning to do is probably put a hinge here right on this thing and on this thing right here so that it could just kind of like fall down ever so slightly off the to the ground because this is really really like tilted upwards where it doesn't necessarily need to be but i mean it should be fine e either way because the sun is going to move up to here and it's going to work out fine i mean we could test it by going in creative mode and changing the sun so let's just say sun's pretty much right above us that should light it up all green and have no issues yeah i mean to an extent it's fully there but I don't know if it's going to charge about batteries. It looks like it might be charging the batteries because these were at zero bars at one point in time. And before I put the solar panels, have you ever seen batteries say <laughs> fully recharge negative one hour before? Because that's what happened to me for some odd reason where it had a negative number instead of um, saying fully depleted at a certain time frame. It just said fully recharge in negative one hour. That's the weirdest thing to me. But is this really enough solar panels once I have all this running and having the sun beam here? I know it's not as great as having it follow the sun in this aspect here. But I'm hoping when it turns noontime and everything like that, it could help us recharge the batteries. And this is going to be a way to keep our whole base up and running and powered up. So this does take a long time to do because of the materials. So it does take uh, a bunch of solar cells, which is um, a little more heavy to carry. I've been using the multi-tool for the most part, but it's still not enough to carry around to do the whole entire thing really quickly. So again, this took quite some time. But yep, this was the main focus of today's video. And once to see if it works out, kind of like a test at some point to see if it's going to charge up our base or not. And... It seems like it kind of works, but that's not too bad. All right, so let's add another gravel container here. So kind of coming from the same aspect of behind the scenes in a way. Um, we're going to add another cargo container, mainly for gravel right over here. So we can move things along. And I'm going to do that sorter. I'm not going to mess with inventory manager. I'm going to stay a little vanilla in this sense. And mess with some sorters and move ores and ingots around. So then that way we won't get as clogged and annoyed by that situation. 
with the assembler. So let's see, is it going to start grabbing gravel? It looks like it's trying to. I mean, I could just do this really quick too. All right, so that's not too bad. So we definitely have more than enough gravel for our needs of anything. I mean, I mean, honestly, not much that uses gravel except for ammo. And what else? I think reactor components. Yeah, that's about it. But we have more than enough for reactor components. Plus, we don't even have a way to get uranium right this moment. But future plan is to create a ship. And it's going to be mostly hydrogen, unfortunately, too. Um, to get to the... Probably get to the moon instead of exploring asteroids. See if we can find some uranium and platinum there. The moon's a little bit easier to find materials because um, it has that little dirty shaders on the moon. So it makes it a little easier to spot. And we're going to use a large ore detector. Initially, I was thinking of converting this and attaching some hydrogen tanks on it and some hydrogen thrusters and blah 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 but i realized the connector issue um which is not connected to anything so that's a bust so we're probably going to create another large grid hydrogen thrusting vehicle or ship with an ore detector and one large car container and maybe i'll be able to attach the drill miner or the drill ship right here this one onto that ship that large ship so then that way we can drill for uranium drill for platinum and then dump it into a large ship and bring it back and i think it's going to take like three to four hydrogen tanks so we can get get to space get to the moon and come back and i think i'm going to use parachutes for once just in case i don't have enough hydrogen to get back to earth in this case but yeah that's a future plan and we are still refining a ton a ton of stuff in terms of iron and stone actually look looks like we're finished with that all right so that's a good sign i thought we still actually had a lot more going on here but it looks like it's not and it looks like we're still doing a lot of steel plate which is good. But I do dislike this issue with the assembler. Like this motor one is blocked up. So it's not going to create any motors. Um, everything else should be fine, I think. Okay, that's not too bad. All right. So next up is... Oh, we can actually get this unknown signal that's dropping right in our faces. So we can just do that really quick. Rainbow drill. All right, we didn't touch iron base number two and the ice lake, but we did try to update the welding rig. Let's see what that's looking like. All right, we made it to the welding rig. We made a lot of progress, and that's kind of part of the episode as well. Solar panels took a while to do, and while this was automated and running forward as much as possible, we did have to redo a projection really quick, but nothing too bad. And I was trying to convert this thing to hydrogen tanks and hydrogen engines, or not engines, thrusters, so that we could use it to pull it forward or backwards whenever we need to. Backwards is working fine. Forwards, not so much. So in the time lapse, you'll see we put in four forward thrusters, and it's still not enough to push it forward. And it could be because it does have a lot of steel plates in there at a given time. So we try to run, we put in like 120k or fill up one large car container. So however much that carries is what's in there. Looks like we're running low on steel plates already. But that's fine because the base has a bunch. But we do have significant progress. Hard to say, hard to say exactly how far we've gone from the base. But I'm going to install the mod really quickly in a second. But we are 50 away from the space cobalt now. Which we were initially away from like 60 or so. So we made it roughly 10 kilometers um away so far which is pretty significant this diagonal angle is getting significantly higher as well so if i do let go of the landing gears altogether we start to fall backwards just a tiny bit so it does get a little sketchy but as you see in the gravity wise we have 0.75 g's 
So we've got some significant progress, which is wonderful. All right, so other than that, it was just designs. So just two hydrogen tanks, um, two backwards thrusts, four forward thrusts. Still not enough for forward thrust, but that's the significant changes we made on the welding rig. And that's about it. And you'll see how far up we are in terms of space in this sense here. All right, let me install the mod really quick so then we can at least see what distance we are from our base. All right, so let me just show you exactly what I'm adding into the active mod section while we're editing it. And we're 24 episodes in, we didn't really add any more. Mod says we kept it as minimal as possible, and this was basically from episode one. Here we go. Here's pretty much the mod list. We have build vision 3.0, camera panning, easy inventory, hover engine, sleep mod, and the GPS distant helper. And that's the one I'm adding today to see how far we are exactly from the base. All right, we're loaded in. Let's check out GPS. Look at base, and we are 33.46 kilometers away. Wow. I actually thought we we're still like 26 kilometers away, but I'm thinking I've been looking at the wrong GPS marker for a long time. But that's base. That's basically right in front of the the home or house I have there. So yeah, this is significant progress. We should be soon out of orbit or not orbit, out of the atmosphere quite soon or gravity, gravity feels quite soon. Um, but even the space cobalt had a little bit of gravity for whatever reason. So we still got lots to go, <laughs> but I'm, I'm impressed myself making it this far. 33 kilometers away. Wow. All right. So lots more to go. Like I said, I think future episodes, we're going to start hunting down that premium premium. <laughs> start hunting out that platinum and uranium because we definitely want to convert some things into uranium powered and not solar powered, wind power, and things like that. And once we reach out of the gravity field and get close to the moon, then that's going to slightly convert a little bit to building another space station, which I've done once before. But we're going to build a, a station in space to kind of like transition from this space elevator from the Earth-like planet to the moon. And then for that space station, to the moon itself so we're gonna make a more vertical one in that case so it'll be a similar aspect to this but it makes it a little bit different because there will be no atmosphere so it's gonna be more ion thrusting or hydrogen thrusting or more landing gear situations i don't know but that's the thing we gotta figure out once we get up there and i hope we get there soon i think there's gonna be a few episodes where it's just climbing but I think that should be okay because we're just making progress. Um, but we do still need to find a few interesting things to do as this thing climbs up. So, hope you guys enjoyed this series, this episode. Of course, if you did, please like, subscribe, drop a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.